How exactly did Rome transform from this to this? We have now already analyzed Rome in detail during different eras of the late Roman Empire, from 320 AD in its peak to around 600 AD in the early Middle Ages in several videos. But in this video, I want to attempt to reconstruct how and why Rome transformed from a magnificent imperial capital of incredible splendor to the medieval field of ruins some thousand years later. How could this happen and how can we imagine this transformation? In 400 AD, if you would have walked through the city of Rome, the city would have appeared magnificent beyond belief. Rome during those times had not been sacked for 800 years and had amassed an incredible number of impressive buildings on the famous Seven Hills. You would have seen incredibly large and splendorous public baths, countless temples, countless amphitheaters, the largest one of course being the Amphitheatrum Flavium, better known as the Colosseum, many circuses, countless statues and an incredible 46,602 insulae or apartment buildings. In that year, the city still had 800,000 inhabitants and was surrounded by the giant walls of Aurelian, 19 kilometers in circumference encompassing an area of 14 square kilometers. The city had grown so large that in many places it even grew beyond the Aurelian walls. By that time, even some churches had sprung up here and there, but they were far outweighed by the sheer number of old pagan temples. In short, it would have been a sight to behold. But only 200 years later, you would have seen a desolate picture, and another 200 years later, you would see crops and cow pastures amidst the ruins. How could this have happened so fast as compared to all the previous time where Rome had been the largest city on the planet for a much longer time? For hundreds of years, Rome had been the largest city on earth and the epicenter of the Roman Empire. In the late second century BC, Rome would surpass Alexandria with regards to population at 500,000 inhabitants, and from the 1st century BC onwards, Rome would hover stable at 1 million inhabitants for hundreds of years, from around 50 BC to 350 AD. What happened in the 5th century then, was what would start the decline of this most magnificent city of humanity. The Roman Empire was invaded during those days by many different Germanic nations, and the empire itself had split in two parts. Unfortunately, the Romans fought themselves in endless civil wars instead of uniting against the enemies, and so Rome would be sacked three times in the 5th century. The first sack of 410 by the Visigoths would see the city plundered for three days and some buildings burned. However, the city would quickly recover and many of the damages would be repaired in the following years. By 450, Rome still had 500,000 inhabitants and was thus still larger than Constantinople, something which is very often forgotten or misrepresented. It was only the second and much more brutal sack of Rome of 455 that would usher in the even faster downward spiral for the city. For 14 days did the Vandals loot and plunder the city and many people, including the imperial family, were led into captivity. It was this sack that would break Rome's neck, so to speak. The city never really recovered population-wise and having been bereft of many riches, the population was now much more impoverished. The people, realizing that Rome was too dangerous to stay, left for the Eastern Roman Empire so that the population further declined. The trade network and public treasury collapsed during those days so that not enough money could be spent to repair the damaged monuments of Rome. 
After 455, the utterly impoverished Roman population itself would start pillaging and looting the old temples and monuments of their own forefathers in order to erect their own more modest dwellings. Even though repairs were still carried out, we can assume that in the 460s the urban decay was a lot more widespread than some decades earlier. Majorian himself issued a law to severely punish the destruction of the old temples and monuments of Rome, but we can assume that it was not very strictly enforced and Majorian did not reign long enough to see the effect of the law come to fruition. But then, as if that hadn't been enough, in 472 the treacherous Magister Militum Ricimer sacked Rome and the city was again damaged through fights in the streets and by fire. I spoke in detail about this most unknown sack of Rome in this video here. Again, repairs were carried out, but by that time the Western Empire was confined to Italy and so in order to repair one building, an older, more dilapidated one had to be looted for building material, because the stone quarries from far away could not be maintained anymore in those dire times. So only the more central areas of the city were kept in repair and were maintained, the outer lying parts started to already fall into decay. Yet still, even during those days, Rome still looked magnificent in parts, and the area around the Forum Romanum was still maintained and repaired and must still have looked impressive. And this continued even after the Western Empire had ended. Even in 500 AD, the African monk Fulgentius exclaimed after visiting Rome, how impressive must the heavenly Jerusalem be when the earthly Rome shines so brightly. But by 500 AD, the population had now already fallen to somewhere between 100 and 200,000 inhabitants. The outer lying parts of the city were now starting to fall into ruin. However, even during those days, the Colosseum was still used from time to time, chariot races were still carried out and the old grand imperial baths were still in perfect working order. But then, in the 6th century, the next series of calamities befell the Eternal City. And please like this video and subscribe so that you won't miss any future videos on the fascinating era of the late Roman Empire. And please consider supporting our work on Patreon or via YouTube membership, because the long-term sustainability of this channel really depends on your support. YouTube is not generous to such a niche topic about the late Roman Empire and the ad revenue from the videos is really low. So in order to be long term sustainable I really need your financial support via Patreon or YouTube membership, as embarrassed as I am to say this. I think Majorian would thank you for supporting a channel bearing his name. I certainly do thank each and every one of you who supports this channel. Gratias Tibiago Amici. In 536, the Eastern Roman general Flavius Belisarius entered Rome and we can assume in those days, Rome looked similar to how it looked around the year 500, since not much had changed in those times, and Rome had enjoyed over 60 years of peace. But from 536 onwards, Rome would see 5 sackings in the short time span of some 20 years. The city was taken by the Eastern Romans, besieged and recaptured by the Goths, recaptured again by the Eastern Romans, recaptured by the Goths, and then recaptured again by the Eastern Romans. Some of those sacks were so devastating that they made the sacks of the 5th century look benign in comparison. When Totila captured the city in 549, it is said that not many people were left living in the city at all and that Rome had resembled a ghost town. So utterly had the population been reduced due to famine and plague because of the constant warfare and the sacks. After this disastrous war, which is known as the Gothic War, Rome's population had plunged to an incredibly low 30,000 people. Before these wars, the city was still maintained, as attested by archaeological evidence. The Ostrogothic king Theoderic 
even allotted the revenue from the wine tax to repair the imperial palace on the Palatine Hill. But now after the Gothic Wars, there was no revenue whatsoever, nor was there enough population to carry out any form of maintenance. So now every time an old imperial building was damaged due to a flooding of the Tiber or an earthquake and collapsed, it was not rebuilt anymore, but looted for building material. In addition, the Romans of those days were culturally already very estranged from their own past and they didn't care much anymore for the old monuments, since they were Christians and the old monuments were very pagan. Thus, a lack of funds and of population, in combination with cultural estrangement towards the old mostly pagan monuments of the past, led to a rapid decay of Rome after the mid-6th century. In 663, a Roman emperor entered the city, which would prove the last time that a Roman emperor would enter the old capital. Yet in those days, Rome was already in very bad shape. However, even then, there must have still been loot left, many bronze statues and other ornaments, because the soldiers of Constance looted the city and stripped many of the old buildings, including the Pantheon, of their bronze ornaments in order to pay for Constance's war preparations against the Arabs. The city also never received any help from Constantinople in order to rebuild itself in any form, and so the decay continued unchecked. By 800 AD, when Charlemagne was crowned there, many of the old monuments were already beyond repair. The Forum Romanum area had already been abandoned because some severe Tiber floods had raised the ground level too much and the Forum had already lost its significance because the Senate had already disappeared by around 600 AD. Yet some of the old buildings were remarkably still standing, as the itinerary of Einsiedeln shows, which was written by a Christian monk who traveled to Rome and wrote down all the sites which could still be seen in the city around 800 AD. In those times, the Forum of Trajan was apparently still standing. So were the Aurelian walls and the city gates. Only the Pincian Gate had been disused after the Gothic Wars. According to the itinerary, the Baths of Alexander were still standing, so were the Baths of Constantine, the Baths of Agrippa and the Septizodium. Of course, many churches are also listed, many of which are not standing anymore. But what is also described indirectly in the manuscript is that the southern and eastern parts of the city within the Aurelian walls were by that time already cow pasture, uninhabited, the disabitatio as it is called, where cows and cattle would graze on grassland interspersed by the old towering ruins of the imperial time. The habitatio, the populated area, was concentrated to the Tiber at the Campus Martius. But the Temple of Jupiter, though already in very ruinous shape, was incredibly still towering on the Capitoline Hill in 800 AD, and the Theatre of Pompey was also still standing. But we can assume that these structures must have already looked very decayed or weathered in those days. In 847 then, a major earthquake hit Rome and many monuments, including the Basilica of Maxentius, collapsed. This would continue through the centuries, until by the late Middle Ages or the early Renaissance period, so around 1500 AD, most of the old buildings had disappeared. They were either destroyed in earthquakes, covered by mud through Tiber floodings, or looted for building material for new buildings, or all of those things combined. But remarkably, despite all this, many old Roman temples were still standing far longer than we would think. Even as late as 1447 were the ruins of the Temple of Jupiter on the Capitoline Hill still standing, and were destroyed as late as in 1576, when the Palazzo Caffarelli was built in its stead. Or the Temple of Vesta in the Forum Romanum, it was apparently quite intact even in 1500, 
but then it was demolished in 1549, its marble then reused to build churches and for the papal palaces. This happened with many other still standing temples in the 16th century. We see thus that even though the Renaissance claims that it saw the rediscovery and rebirth of antiquity, in reality cultural vandalism of the utmost degenerate nature was the reality of those times. But it would take some more centuries until humanity would slowly learn to revere the old monuments and buildings of antiquity and to understand that these old buildings were more than just ruins. They are witnesses of ages long past that still to this day tell the story of the rise and fall of empires and what we ourselves can learn from these events and to understand ourselves better. And if you are interested in how exactly the Gothic Wars damaged Rome, you can watch this video here in the upper right corner. But if you are more interested in learning how Rome itself looked when the Western Empire ceased to exist, you can watch the other video in the lower right corner. I say thanks again to all friends of Roman history, gratias tibiago amici and bene valete.